tradition of Russian money means business, as we always say, and business means money. Stability and business mean a lot of money, but also uh, not under uh, situations like uh, this situation we are all our economies are reeling under like the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic that is affecting all economies of the world and their performance. Uh, a lot has been happening recently, week by week, of course, in Egypt. We'll, uh, we'll, we're uh, uh, going against time uh, uh, racing in order to rebuild everything that uh, came to a halt during uh, the year 2011 and 2012. Um, a lot uh, of building, a lot of projects taking place, and uh, we've got, uh, uh, we're going to talk about a lot. And uh, what happened also yesterday was the announcement that the Monetary Policy Committee did of the Central Bank of Egypt had uh, uh, decided to maintain the overnight uh, deposit rate, uh, overnight uh, uh, lending rate, and the rate main operation unchanged at 8.25%, uh, 9.25%, 9.25% and 8.75% respectively. The discount rate also was also kept unchanged at 8.75%. The MPC attributed this decision to the increase of the annual headline urban inflation to 4.5% in February 2021, up from 4.3% in January 2021, after having decelerated from 5.4% in December 2020. And uh, we are going uh, to uh, have a report with more. Minister of Finance Dr. Mohammed Maid confirmed that the Egyptian economy is still receiving praise from international institutions in light of the corona pandemic with positive indicators it has achieved, which reflect its resilience in the face of internal and external crisis as a result of the historic reforms adopted by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and supported by the Egyptian people. Maid indicated that Egypt is the only country in the Middle East, according to estimates by Standard Chartered Bank, which can restore growth rate before the pandemic to record 5.5% of GDP during the fiscal year 2021 and 2022. He explained that Standard Chartered Bank's recent projections for the Egyptian economy are consistent with its previous estimates before the pandemic that Egypt will become among the top 10 economies in the world in the year 2030, and according to the rate of GDP, it will jump from 21 to 7 in the world. Noting that the International Monetary Fund raised its estimate of the growth rate during the current fiscal year from 2% to 2.8%, so that it would jump to 5.8% in the next fiscal year, and this is what the World Bank also expected in its latest report. Earlier, Moody's, the credit rating agency, granted Egypt a new certificate of confidence as the only country in Africa that maintains a positive growth path before and during the pandemic, while a research institution affiliated with Fitch Ratings for Credit Rating has expected a growth rate of 3% in the current fiscal year. The minister added that the elaborate implementation of the economic reform program provided the government with a financial space through which it was able to increase public investment and enhance spending on improving health care and educational services and projects to transform into digital Egypt, whose importance has doubled in light of the pandemic with the required social distancing and electronic transactions in various fields. Back again to Money Means Business, and we have online uh, uh, Mr. Ayub Mahmoud Ayub, uh, uh, Ms., uh, former uh, Minister of Trade Commissioner. Welcome, sir, with us. Good evening to you. And Good, to evening, the viewers. Sir. Good evening, sir. Um, so it's a pleasure always having you. And um, oh, as you see, that the, minister, the, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Egypt had decided to maintain uh, the overnight deposit rate, overnight lending rate, and the rate of main operation unchanged at 8.25%, 9.25%, and 8.75% respectively. Uh, why did they take that decision and based uh, on what and uh, well, uh, and uh, uh, what is expected out of it? 
This is an important decision by the Central Bank of Egypt to keep the stability of the economy, stability of the money supply, and also to encourage investors to come to a stable economy with clear-cut decisions as far as lending and borrowing rates are concerned. When we see that this has been stabilized for a second time, and at, at the end of 1920, also it was stabilized, this means that the investors, which is very important to the Egyptian economy, are coming to a market, I see a market, whether they are investors, Egyptians or Arabs or foreigners, are coming to the market, which is stable as far as its monetary policies are concerned. The rate of lending or borrowing of this is set by the Central Bank of Egypt, which is stipulated for all the banks in Egypt are, are following it. This enables this, uh, the investors and would-be investors to properly calculate how much would it cost him to borrow money from the bank, for example, and how much will he, uh, how much will he invest in this market. This is one thing. Other thing which is equally important is that even the local investors, even the local depositors, are sure for now, that for for some time to come, their deposits are in safe hands and with clear cut monetary policy as far as the exchange, the, the uh, rates of deposits and of loans are concerned. Another consideration which is very important, when we look to the cost of debts for the public uh, budget, uh, this means that it is stable now. People will be worried about what can happen tomorrow and will encourage many newcomers to come to the market to invest and to deposit or to establish new new companies, new ventures in, 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 in Egypt. All these aspects which I spoke about conclude, bring us to a conclusion that the Egyptian economy is stable and also stabilized and this will encourage also the new initiative by President Fatah Sisi to enable small owners to borrow from the bank to have their own house for with a loan for all the 30 years to be paid up for 30 years with a very limited uh, interest rate of 3%. This is a, one of the rep important repercussions of this positive attitude and the positive decision taken by the Central Bank of Egypt. We hope that this will reflect on investment. When I say investment, I mean in the, in the, at the same time on employment. Because after COVID, we have seen many businesses are leaving the market. But now we are encouraging these businesses to invest in the market and to maintain their presence and production and exports at some stage when they begin production. This is a very important as far as employment is concerned, as far as uh, foreign uh, exchange receipts of the, of the country is concerned, and also for the exports, which is very important when the COVID in many countries stopped export, and this is a good opportunity for the Egyptian companies to begin to initiate the process of exporting, especially to the African markets. Well, uh, Mr. Ayoub Mahmoud Ayoub, uh, former Minister uh, of Trade, Commissioner, thank you for being with us. And uh, we'll go you know, now you know, to our guest, uh, uh, Mr. Khalid Abu Hayyub, Chairman of uh, the uh, uh, Investment Committee of the National Council for Strategic uh, uh, Development and Planning. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank well, you Well, it's me. been, actually, you know, this is exactly, as you said, a year from last year when you came from the States, and just here we hosted you for the first time last That's year. True. That's Definitely. true. It's the uh, anniversary. Anniversary, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, we're going for a short break after which we'll be starting our talk, so sure. stay tuned to us. Don't go away. Sure. back in a moment.
we back again to my name is business. Our guest, uh, Mr. Khaled Abu Hayyub, uh, Chairman of the Investment Committee of the National Council for Strategic Planning. Welcome again, sir, with us. Welcome. Thank you. It's been well, pleasure you know, being here. A lot has been happening since you know you decided to stay here in Egypt. You know, when you came for uh, a very few days for a personal matter, and then uh, you've been away for so long. But then you decided to stay in Egypt uh, for True. changes you saw. But then again, one year passed and uh, there is more that happened. So how do you qualify, how do you rate uh, all the changes? What have you seen when you came? What are you noticing now? Uh, first of all, uh, once again, thank you for uh, hosting me. Our pleasure. It's been a pleasure always being on your show. Uh, as you said, March is marking uh, the first anniversary of my first time being on your show. Uh, in our first episode and the second and the third with you, we were talking, analyzing uh, about what we want to see, what we are witnessing, what we hope. Now, um, after 12 months have passed, uh, uh, there's a lot have been done. Uh, and uh, uh, let me say, uh, it is... Um, I cannot describe my feelings seeing uh, something we were talking about and documented that we want it to happen yeah. and it's happening. Yes. Uh, we were, they were talking about oh, bridges everywhere, what are we doing? And now the bridges have been done. The flow of traffic is, is, is great. Coming from Heliopolis, coming to Mispiro here, 25 minutes, nobody wanted, it was you all, stick all two, two, three hours. Yes, yeah. it's almost the time which we used to take in one traffic light. Mm -hmm. Then the amount of traffic of itself is, is, is very low, which say that the flow is being done scientifically correct. Uh, the, uh, the suburbs and the new cities uh, which has been built around Cairo and outside Cairo has already been absorbing a lot of the traffic outside it. People are residing. So all this gives indication that things are going according to a plan. And uh, uh, whether you go to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south, uh, things are start to get decentralized. Yeah. So not everyone needs to be in Cairo. All the service now is available, in, or available all over Egypt. Uh, maybe what I'm, I'm saying here is for the ordinary Egyptian, they don't feel it. But for someone who's like me, who've been there outside, uh, abroad for 24 years, away from Egypt, this is completely astonishing what you're saying, and this is completely new. Yes. And again and again, yeah. this is... Uh, I'm trying to be an eyewitness person and speak honestly out of my heart. So uh, our dear Egyptians who are living abroad, they need to hear the voice of real media. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking here about what they're hearing outside, but when I was there, no one told me how mm -hmm. the picture is going. Actually, you get a grim picture, you know, that whatever you know, they export, the pictures of especially uh, um, those uh, international uh, uh, say you know um, uh, news uh, uh, releases or they just you know always uh, bring grim or you know, they they just uh, uh, well just put things that are not true always you know um, we've been seeing this especially from 2011 2012 and later on it's like as if they're fighting anything good that is happening they're always bringing the anything else you know you see you know this is not happening here you know what are they you know uh, broadcasting True. Uh, going through the history, yeah. uh, always Egypt had enemies. Yes. They had enemies from outside and much more uh, dangerous, yeah. the enemies which are within the deep states. Mm -hmm. So um, I was always hearing when I was overseas in the States, oh, why he's building, why Egypt is investing in a new capital? Why yeah. this money? Why this? Yeah. Why that? The rumors that they also you know, export to those people who okay. are uninformed about then anything to, to now, just... Now, within yeah. this year, uh, like three weeks ago, yeah. uh, they were opening uh, the reservation to people to register mm -hmm. to buy two or three towers mm -hmm. uh, in less than 48 hours. 
the three towers were sold. So what are we talking here? Mm -hmm. uh, are these people who are trying to, this is, this is, this is private money here. Yes. Are they are throwing their money out? So Definitely I not. Said Everybody knows, you know, when they're going, investing, uh, where that? to the money, exactly. So, and uh, I decided to go and visit yeah. the new capital, the administrative capital, which I love always to, to, to rename it to the administra administrative capital of Africa. Yeah. And this is the headquarters of Africa. Yes. Uh, and I went over there and I cannot explain to you uh, what I, uh, I uh, what I've seen. I had goosebumps all over my body it is almost like going uh, through Washington DC mm -hmm. uh, where the um, the mall is and you can see all of this buildings of the federal government uh, of the United States you're going over there you find them all the new ministers are being built uh, everything is very well organized yeah. everything is beautifully built architecture have a taste and it is, it is something glorious is coming out. And State of the art. Uh, you name it. You know, yeah. uh, there, is no, uh, there is no narrow roads, yeah. uh, six lanes, eight lanes. The new monorail, the station is starting to be built. So uh, it's true. It is, it is true. And people are building and people are buying. And, and with, with, with this... Uh, as you just mentioned in the opening about the interest rate going down, it's yeah. a very wise decision. Mm -hmm. So people need to start to invest and put, to see where they're going to put their money. Yes. Here is the equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, you, don't, you don't put your money in the banks. No, go put it and start to invest, start to build, put it in real estate, put it in whatever project, let the money uh, 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 circulate. And uh, when I went through the the engineering codes of the new capital uh, believe it or not it is the state of the art uh, codes especially when it comes to the networks uh, the fiber optics over there uh, the, the how it can be expandable uh, and, and people over there they are not joking everything is done by the book and you're gonna say what is this it is almost you seeing a building downtown Manhattan or just in Washington DC or in California. It is the same standard. And you say, if this is the Egyptian building this, yeah. why we didn't do this? 20, 30, 50, 60 years ago. No, this is like, uh, exactly, but this is a very short time, actually magnanimous yes. work done. It is the, the courage of the leader. Yes. We're going to do it. And, and the it management, need, definitely. And it needs to be done. That's completely new. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, also, you know, as you said, you know, like um, um, the capital of Africa. Yes. You know, Egypt is back again in full force, taking again its place, and uh, yes. you know, with the, Africa amalgamated again, is, you know, with the African is, this countries. This is a reason why I said that. You know, I am so fond of Africa. I love yes. Africa, yes. especially West Africa, Senegal, Togo, uh, Gambia, uh, Guinea, uh, Mali. Uh, Mauritania, uh, Niger, yeah. uh, all of these countries loves, 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 loves Egypt. Mm -hmm. And but uh, uh, when we go in the past 24 months, just the past 24 months, the past two years, you will find that the finally the Egyptian diplomat is reclaiming back yes. Egypt's uh, territories. Let's yes. say it. Uh, we're putting our influence back on our on the Nile mm -hmm. and uh, all the countries around it on West Africa on Central Africa we're starting to regain our influence again so regaining this we need to capitalize on it and tell them we are here for you we're not gonna leave you again yes uh, and uh, Egypt is the gate to Africa Definitely. and if Egypt is the gate to Africa this is the capital of Africa we have all the right to name it the capital of Africa if you want to do business in Africa you better be in that spot exactly. and we can with what I've seen here it is the most it's gonna be the most advanced city technologically in Africa uh, I travel a lot over Africa it's been nothing to be compared. Yeah. Plus, uh, Egypt is, 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 is a real country. Yeah. 
Uh, nobody just came to the, uh, to the sand and said, okay, we're going to make here a country. No, we, we are real people, a real yeah. economy, a real culture. Well, so, they live 7,000 years, uh, so even yes. more. Definitely. So we are, we are just telling the people, okay, guys, we're back in business. We're yes. here. Yes. Uh, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. and, with the, um, and with the revolution of the Internet yeah. and with trade without borders, uh, with the new African uh, um, treaty, which was signed by the president uh, for all the 54 African states to start it with no borders, no taxes. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is, this is a great, great opportunity for Egypt to capture the moment and to expand. Forget about Europe, forget about the white guy. This is the real Africa. They need our teachers. Yeah. They need our doctors. I went to countries. They had only... This is the words from the president of this country. They have only two doctors in a whole country for over 22 million people. So what our doctors are sitting here, let's give them, send them over there. We can do a lot of exchange over Africa. Yeah. We have the time again to really influence the Egyptian influence, education and, and education, health, the woman health, yeah. the youth, uh, we, uh, we need to take this leadership uh, again. Definitely. Uh, locally, mm -hmm. uh, what we have seen in the past uh, year is that uh, you see, like for instance, the cabinet of the president, uh, the role of the woman. We always say no developing without woman, child health, yeah. and, uh, and education, then taking care of the youth. But the core, the core is always the woman. Of course. Okay. Of course. And, and it's been neglected for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now we see the cabinet, how many ministers we have. Very highly educated, very, high, very brilliant, very sharp ladies. They know what they're talking about and what. And they get the thing done. So, and, and with the programs uh, which has been done uh, under the first uh, uh, lady uh, uh, management about uh, the health of the women, the health of the children, this is what we need here, and that's what we need to export exactly. to Africa. Exactly. Well, we're going for a short break after she's becoming Max Tissue to us. Don't go away. A lot more is coming. Don't go away. back again uh, and we have online Dr. Ali Asarhan, uh, former World Bank uh, uh, expert. Welcome, sir, with us here. Dr. Sarhan. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure having Hello. you. Yes, hi. 
Um, uh, Dr. Much. Sirhan, uh, the, we've got uh, the IMF and Fitch and in talking about uh, the development of the economy of Egypt and uh, uh, the amazing development also. Uh, well, in these days there is a boost in the oil industry. The IMF lauded the Egyptian uh, government's endeavors to modernize the refinery of Alexandria with a view to reducing the country's consumption of petroleum products and uh, their emissions. Meanwhile, Fitch ratings see the ongoing projects to increase the capacity of domestic oil refineries uh, will help boost the country's production of petroleum products and ease the burden of importing gasoline, as the report said. Not only that, also, you know, compared to uh, the outages we had in electricity in 2011-2012 and these years, you know, that when uh, the economy and uh, the whole country hit rock bottom due to what took place, um, well, you know, with the, with the boost uh, in the economy, um, things changed. How do you see that? Uh, first of all, uh, let me say, uh, you have touched on a very important project, uh, and it's actually a, a huge milestone for Egypt. But at the same time, let me just um, share with you some thoughts about uh, recent developments in the Egyptian economy. Three things that really uh, have um, uh, taken me, you know, I've taken me a, a lot of thought about what is going on. First one is the green recovery. Uh, in the post-pandemic, -pan uh, post-COVID-19 uh, world, uh, the Prime Minister of Egypt has announced that there's going to be, the economy is going to recover uh, uh, in the post pandemic by, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming up with a stimulus package towards the green recovery, which is basically meaning that uh, there's going to be a lot of investments in the environment and in improving the quality of life for Egyptians. So this is very good news to know that uh, Egypt is joining the, uh, uh, you know, all of the nations, the international community in trying to uh, uh, you know, in, in establish green recovery activities and projects and investment. So this is very good news. The second thing is, uh, which is very much related to the uh, increase in the uh, capacity of the uh, petrochemical industries in Egypt, the second thing is the uh, hydrogen era. Egypt has announced about maybe three or four weeks ago that they are exploring the potential for uh, having investments in the hydrogen era. This is a very clean fuel. This is state-of-the-art technology, and I'm so happy, I'm so pleased to know that Egypt is doing this very early on uh, move to, or action rather, to uh, explore the potential for uh, establishing this new uh, technology in Egypt, the hydrogen technology. This is excellent news. The third thing, which is uh, also coming in as a, uh, as a, as a big uh, milestone in Egypt, is the electric train, the mega project to have an electric train from uh, as down as uh, in Hergada, maybe, uh, in the, on the Red Sea, all the way up to the northern coast. This is going to be a, um, a huge um, step towards... Uh, uh, facilitation of cargo, of passenger, of tourism, and so on and so forth. So just to recap, I think the three major things that we have witnessed in the last few weeks with regard to the, uh, you know, moving forward with the economy, the uh, green recovery, the hydrogen uh, 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 revolution, I would say, because this is a, it's going to turn so many things upside down in terms of the uh, technology, and the third thing is the electric train. I think the three, these are three uh, main, uh, I would say, flagships of what the government is going to be doing uh, in the, you know, next in the short and medium term. So I think this is going to have very um, positive uh, uh, impact on the Egyptian economy as we move forward. So I hope that uh, I was able to capture some of the uh, main. Uh, features of the economy. Uh, so uh, I'll stop here. 
Dr. Alex Sarhain, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Dr. Alex Sarhain, former World Bank uh, chief expert, thank you for being with us. And uh, back again uh, uh, to our guest. Uh, uh, well, you know, last year we've been again talking about things, and you know, that like COVID-19 came, and you said that Egypt is not going to be really that much affected, and it really happened that. Well, World International uh, Agencies uh, uh, well, hailed the Egyptian economy, the efforts done by the Egyptian economy and the economic experts in, in Egypt here during that time. It really just came uh, nearly unscathed of that. A lot of efforts have been exerted in this. Now, you know, like well, we do have, you know, like uh, a plan still hopes and uh, uh, well for the projects taking place and uh, we want more to achieve about uh, uh, a lot about industry but then again you know as we uh, said there is no um, uh, improvement uh, and development without health care and of course taking care of women that are just you know um, the nucleus of the family also we would like to talk about the cyber infrastructure that is the base of all that uh, that's true. Uh, if you uh, first uh, allow me uh, to comment on what you said, definitely, then I definitely. will comment ahead, on please, my please. dear yes. friend, uh, Dr. Ala uh, Sarhan, and my schoolmate. Uh, first, speaking about what we said about COVID-19 in this show about a year ago and how Egypt could be affected, uh, it was almost like if we were having the crystal ball in front of us and we were talking about a lot of stuff exactly. which has been happening. That really realized, definitely. <laughs> right. Which is like, you know, like yeah. when we talk okay. and you say, we cannot really comment now because we don't have a crystal ball yes. seeing the future definitely yes. with uh, all the changes taking but, place. But uh, uh, it was just following a simple rule. There are people who are, can see uh, opportunities where everybody can see it's so dark. Uh, I told you here in this show, everybody's talking about the epidemic, epidemic, and this is gonna do this in the economy. I told you here that it is a golden opportunity to Egypt mm -hmm. to focus on itself and to rebuild from inside out. And we spoke about four or five or six points, which happened that it's been already in the agenda of the government and they, they, were, and they went. Uh, speaking to my dear friend, uh, Dr. Ala Sarhan from Washington, it's always a pleasure hearing his voice. Uh, he's a very well-renowned person worldwide known, and especially uh, in the field of environmental uh, uh, things. Yeah. Uh, I would love, Biani, to, to bring the news to him that uh, Egypt is working now on uh, an ecosphere or an ecosystem or a holistic system to be to, for vehicles to be zero emission. Yeah. Uh, this is something unheard about it, even in the United States, uh, even anywhere in, in Europe, to reach a whole country with zero emission uh, uh, in it. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody is founded when they go to, for instance, uh, to Angola mm -hmm. and say, uh, or, or Rwanda, I'm sorry, to Rwanda and say, oh, you can go from bus to bus, or all, everything is electronically. Mm -hmm. What you see over there is just a very simple piece of a great ecosystem, which is already being engineered and being inspected uh, right now. Uh, going back and speaking about the, the pillars, uh, and I all speak, love to talk about Africa, uh, and also, a year ago from your show, we announced the Africa Forward Foundation. Yes. And Egypt is the gate to Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa and Egypt will not gonna go forward without taking care of the pillars. Number one is the woman, the health, the health and the uh, education yeah. and the cyber in infrastructure yeah okay uh, and there's let's learn from the past uh, the united nations and all of this organization did 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 some things in in africa but really when they did they were not working all together with themselves because they were taking care of the child not to die but what about him when he become a youth yeah he hold a gun and they were militants so there is really 
was not real programs to develop m Africa. So again here, talking about Egypt, all of these countries were just in the orbit of Egypt. What Mama Egypt is doing, mm -hmm. what the mother of Egypt is doing. So uh, when, when they start to see that there is an importance for the education, there is an importance for the women health and for the children and see some things which is like happening in the new capital, how the cyber infrastructure is being done and how it could be utilized mm -hmm. and how this system can help the healthcare system of Egypt and can help, for instance, the transportation industry of Egypt yeah. and how it can help the finance industry of Egypt. We, these are true examples. They, 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 we will be leading by example to all of these countries and we can export these technologies and our companies can go there and open these markets and we can regain our, 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 our position as the, the jewel of Africa. Cairo were the best city in Africa and it was even the, 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 the be most beautiful city in the world. Alexandria were the pearl of the Mediterranean. These times are coming. We can regain that. And we said that Egypt can have to come back to its strong economy like before 1952 when mm -hmm. the pound was much more than the golden uh, uh, pound because our territory included Sudan and parts of Libya and parts mm -hmm. of Africa. That's happening in another way right now. You can see what's happening right now mm -hmm. in Libya over the past year. It's been there till cert. Yes. Everything is going to the way which is uh, strategically uh, can, can secure Egypt. Yeah. Uh, we have a whole big reservoir of petroleum over there. We redesigned our maritime borders and we get all of our gas. Uh, our, 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 I don't want to say biggest enemy, but we had a very big conflict with them since the past 10 years, yes. which happened with, with, with Turkey. Turkey now knew that Egypt were never against it. Mm -hmm. Actually, the treaty which we did when we remapped the, 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 the borders of the gas uh, fields, yeah. it was done. So now Turkey is coming back to Egypt. We are gaining our, 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 our leadership not only in Africa, but in the MENA region yeah. and in the area. All of this, when we have a strong army, strong police controlling, there is no development. Nobody is going to live and go to home secure or put his or invest without strong army and strong police. Definitely. We are serious and we mean business. That's why things are getting strong. People are trusting in our economy. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the interest rates are are going down or at stable. Yeah. This all indication is, is telling you that Egypt is the place to invest still and it is step by step regaining its position as the, the number one leader of Africa mm -hmm. and the Middle East. Definitely. Well, in the crystal ball <laughs> <laughs> that you look at and you just, you know, can find uh, or just you like uh, predict the future that is unpredictable for many, of course, with the variables and changes that are unexpected happening, uh, that been happening consecutively um, with Africa. Yes. What more can be done in order to boost relations, in order to be stronger, actually, and exchange in everything that is, you know, like there is a lot, you know, of these countries in Africa, the rich ones, uh, yes. with the resources they have, and with Egypt technology, and also what we have that we can just, you know, cooperate in order to uh, go ahead. I hope that uh, 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 all the, um, all the, I don't want to say the cabinet, but the people could listen deeper to what the president is saying, okay, and imp try to implement this vision, okay. Uh, uh, Egypt, uh, um, uh, Africa is wide open now for, for Egypt. Yeah. We need to, to, to control how things can be done. We have, t we have a treaty that 54 countries in Africa is without borders. We can, they can buy by the Egyptian pound. 
we don't need we don't need sterling we don't need an american dollar to buy for them mm -hmm. so why don't we force uh, these these uh, these treaty Definitely. at 54 countries the united states is 50 states okay we have now 54 countries with their economies with their people no borders that's the treaty it is uh, and 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 they can buy by the Egyptian pound. I don't care how it could be done. Uh, I just, just follow what the president's saying. I need it to be done. This needed to be done. Can you imagine the, the, the demand on the, on the Egyptian pound? Like somebody in Senegal, yeah. somebody in Togo, somebody in Kenya, somebody in, in, in the middle of nowhere in Africa want to buy something from Egypt. He can buy it with the Egyptian pound? How is big really is the demand is? Mm -hmm. we, uh, America, the United States, uh, invaded I uh, Iraq because he said, I'm going to change it to, 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 to the European or whatever. Uh, and they invaded them. They invaded Pax, uh, Afghanistan. They invaded Libya one time when the Gaddafi said, well, I'm going to do it with another country than the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to, to supply all of this with this treaty, with the Egyptian pound. Yeah. 54 countries can buy with their local currencies. What can we buy from them? Actually, they are the ones who want to buy from us. We, we need to make it easy for the Africans to buy from Egypt. We need to ease the, 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 the border taxations and the uh, customs. Uh, we, don't, we need to get out of this bureaucracy. Exactly. Everything needs to be clear and on, on a portal. Someone in, in Angola want to buy, someone in, in Kenya want to buy, someone in, 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 in uh, Senegal, in Togo, in Mali. Did they just order from Egypt? So we this is the demand, you know, more flexibility. Yes. And exactly easing uh, these. Uh, and this, this will not be uh, 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 well received by the bureaucracy in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it also will not be well received by the deep state who want us to be captured. Yes. So we need real, open the channels, open the channels, make it clear, let these people come. Yes. And one last thing I always say, please, Egypt Air need to fly to Africa. Well, this is the demand of many experts. Actually, Egypt yes. Air has to reach many places that will be just a big change uh, yeah, please mm -hmm. how many times i said it here on your on, on your show Definitely. egypt air is not flying to dakar and 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 we're leaving the whole franco uh, uh, countries for uh, another airlines to go and should we should be there at full force actually what's, definitely, what's definitely. Just, uh, i think well dreams come true and we you know we've been talking about lots of things that being crystallized and uh, <laughs> became a reality so yes, dreams can you can become reality yes. we dream and we realize that we are always the people who loves egypt yeah. need to speak up definitely oh, uh, it is Sometimes when we criticize, we're not criticized to put it down. We no, criticize it to, and we to, want to get things, out. Definitely. I would love to see Egypt definitely. Air all over Africa. If I want to book a ticket today to Conakry, I want to book it to over. I don't want to go to Direct, Paris and from uh, Paris to where exactly. or go to Dubai and going back. And so we have, a lot, right we have a lot of youth. We need a lot of jobs. Definitely. Make 10 Egypt Airs. I, I don't know how to say it much more <laughs> than that. <laughs> I think this would realize we are saying it, and people who love Egypt also will realize that. Yes. Well, um, it's always a pleasure having you, Mr. Khalil Waib. Uh, Thank you. And we'll see you more with the development, and uh, we look in the crystal, your crystal ball, and we'll see you know, how things will develop. It's the cyber infrastructure. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So we're going to be uh, seeing you again next week. As for now, we always wish Egypt all the best in the world, def definitely. God bless Egypt, God bless Egyptians, God bless our police, our army, white army, our president. And as we put from the Holy Quran, enter Egypt, God willing, safe. Itkhulu Nusra, inshallah, aminin. And uh, from uh, the Holy Bible, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Mubarak Shabi Masrah. I'm Nabi Nazim signing off with you again next week. Bless you.